Now that we are saving some number of employees to Firebase, we can start to ramp up our employee list component and make sure that it can actually display a list of employees to our users. So we'll open up our employee list component. Right now it's just got some scaffolding in here, just something to show the hard-coded employee list text over and over again. So we're going to want to freshen up this component a little bit to show a list of employees to the user. The other thing we have to think about is we have to somehow load our list of employees, right? Like we're not actually loading any employees right now. We can create them, but we can't actually fetch them just yet. So maybe the best place to start would be to figure out a way to fetch the list of employees, make sure we can actually fetch them, you know, get them in our application state, and then work on employee list a little bit more to make sure that it shows a nicely formatted and nice looking list. So I think that'll be our plan of action. We'll first make an action creator to fetch our list of employees. We will add a new reducer to store that list of employees and then we'll come back to employee list and make sure that we can actually render that list of employees. So that's gonna be our plan. Let's get started first with our action creator. We're going to add the action creator for fetching the list of employees into employee actions because this is our file that has to do with everything related to working with employees. So we'll create a new action creator in here and we'll call it employees fetch. Oops, fetch, no, there we go. So inside of here, we need to somehow reach out to Firebase, grab our list of employees and you know just fetch them, dispatch an action. This is again going to be an asynchronous action because we have to make some type of request to fetch our data. And that means that we'll definitely want to be using Redux Thunk here as well. So inside of our action creator, we will return a fat arrow function that gets called with the dispatch method. Now here comes the fun part again. Remember how we work with our Firebase data. We create a ref to a very particular spot in our JSON database, just like we did up here inside of the employee create method. By creating a ref, we can then work with the data located at that path. So we are currently saving all of our employees to users slash current user ID slash employees. That means we can make another reference to the same location, but this time tell Firebase that we want to fetch data from that location rather than pushing a new record in there. So inside of our employees fetch method, we're going to create the same ref again. Firebase.database.ref and then we're going to use string interpolation again. So I'm going to use backticks again. Users, current user, UID, employees. Now we do need access to the current user. So we will get access to the current user again with, oops, I keep on hitting that caps lock. We'll pull the current user property off of firebase.auth. So now current user is the user who is currently logged into our application. Now we have our ref to this location inside of Firebase, but this time around we want to fetch data out of here. We want to pull some amount of data. So fetching the data, uh, the syntax doesn't look maybe, doesn't look quite look like what you would expect. Okay, it's a little bit strange. Let's go through it nice and slow though. On my Firebase ref, I'm going to chain on a dot on I'm going to pass in the first argument of value and then a second argument of snapshot, like so. And then that's going to be a fat arrow function. So the fat arrow function is going to be called with this snapshot object right here. You can read this entire statement right here as saying something like, anytime any data comes across from this ref or this bucket of data, so anytime we get any value, any data, call this function right here, this fat arrow function, with an object to describe the data that's sitting in there. And that's the snapshot right thing. So the snapshot variable here, it's a little bit misleading. You might expect this to be like an array of all the different employees that we have inside our, our application, but it is an object that describes what data is in there. So it is not the array of employees. It is an object that we can use to get a handle on those employees. Let's see how we actually use it. So whenever we get some amount of new data from this ref right here, we will dispatch an action. We'll give it a type of employees fetch success. 
and a payload of snapshot.val. So this snapshot.val right here, this is the magic. This is how we actually get access to the data that is at this ref right here. So again, snapshot is not the actual data. It is an object that describes the data that we could get access to. So if we want to get the actual employees that are located there, we have to call snapshot.val. Yeah, a little, little bit misleading, I think. Doesn't quite follow a lot of uh, you know trends of other libraries. But the reasoning behind using Snapshot right here is that it gives you a lot of other fantastic data, kind of like meta-level data about what JSON is sitting at that point right there. All right, so we are now creating our ref. Anytime we get any data from this thing, we're going to dispatch a type, um, an action. One thing that I want to point out right here is that this on value action creator, it is persistent, so to speak. So if we call employees fetch one time, just like one time, it will immediately start up this event handler right here. And for the life of the rest of our application, it will call this Fadero function anytime any new data comes across. So this is kind of where Firebase and Redux, they kind of work together pretty well because we can just set up this thing right here to watch for some amount of new data. And then at any point in our application's lifecycle, anytime that there's any new value that comes across, we will immediately automatically, I should say, we will automatically dispatch an action of type employees fetch success with the new data in there. And so this is gonna be really valuable for that employee going from employee create back to employee list. Because when we call employee create, we make the new employee, Firebase will automatically detect that we added a new employee, it will dispatch an action automatically, and our data will instantly show up inside of the employee list without us actually having to do anything. So pretty nice in that regard. Now the last thing we have to do is make sure that we create this type right here, employees fetch success. So at the very top, we will add on the new type, employee fetch success. And I, I'm getting error there, so I must have a typo. Employees fetch success. This is a little bit annoying here. I've got employee singular in other locations, but in this location right here, I've got employees. It's a little bit misleading, but we are fetching multiple employees. So I'm gonna stick with employees, plural, like so. Just make sure whatever you go with, just make sure that you are uh, have the same type, either employee or employees in both locations. Now don't forget we actually out, we also have to add this to our type file. So let up open up the type file, export const employees fetch success. Cool. Looks good. Let's continue in the next section where we are going to create a new reducer that's going to catch this action right here of employees fetch success. Mm -hmm.